The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to Mass on this Sunday, the 12th of Ordinary Time. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd who is leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. From the heart of the tempest, the Lord gave Job his answer. He said, Who pent up the sea behind closed doors when it leapt tumultuous out of the womb, when I wrapped it in a robe of mist and made black clouds its swaddling bands, when I marked the bounds it was not to cross and, when it, and made it fast with a bolted gate, Come thus far, I said, and no farther. Here your proud waves will break. The word of the Lord. Some sailed to the sea in ships to trade on the mighty waters. These men have seen the Lord's deeds, the wonders he does in the deep. For he spoke, he summoned the gale, tossing the waves of the sea, up to heaven and back down again. Their soul melted away in their distress. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper, all the waves of the sea were hushed. They rejoiced because of the calm, and he led them to the haven they desired. Let them thank the Lord for his love, the wonders he does for men. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ overwhelms us when we reflect that if one man has died for all, then all men should be dead. And the reason he died for all was so that living men should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for them. 
From now onwards, therefore, we do not judge anyone by the standards of the flesh. Even if we did once know Christ in the flesh, that is not how we know him now. And for anyone who is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old creation has gone, and now the new one is here. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. A great prophet has appeared among us. God has visited his people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. With the coming of evening, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him just as he was in the boat, and there were other boats with him. Then it began to blow a gale, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that it was almost swamped. But he was in the stern, his head on the cushion, asleep. They woke him and said to him, Master, do you not care? We're going down. And he woke up and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet now, be calm. And the wind dropped and all was calm again. Then he said to them, Why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? They were filled with awe and they said to one another, Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. It was a beautiful day in the park and a young father was pushing his screaming child in the pram. As the father wheels his infant son along the path, he keeps murmuring, Easy now, Donald. Just keep calm, Donald. It's all right, Donald. Just relax. It's going to be all right, Donald. A woman passes by and said to the young father, You certainly know how to talk to an upset child, quietly and gently. The woman then leans over the pram and says, What seems to be the trouble, Donald? And the father says, Oh no, he's Henry, I'm Donald. People of faith are not easily rattled. Even in the midst of pressure, they're far from phased. Those with a gloomier outlook on life may seem to be bound by Murphy's Law, which says anything that can go wrong will go wrong. They say, don't they, that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, our perception of reality, our often false reflection or perception of reality, can often be coloured solely by what's in the eyes of the beholder as well. The apostles in today's gospel seem to be very frightened even though Jesus is with them in the boat, albeit asleep. They said to him, Do you not care? We're going down. Sometimes we too lash out at people when fears and insecurities takes hold of us. However, our friends often rightly remind us that things are not quite as bad as we are making them out to be. That's the devil's trick. He wants to demoralize us by painting a blacker than black picture of the problem which is often way out of proportion with the real situation. When a person's faith in God is fragile, a void is created, providing ideal conditions for insecurities, whether real or imaginary, to rush in and fill that void. Fear, of course, is the opposite of faith. Jesus said to the apostles, Why are you so frightened, O ye of little faith? But it's not just the fear we experience when faced with physical danger. There are other fears as well. 
Some fears originate from an upsetting experience we've had in childhood and will re-emerge later in life in the form of a, an irrational fear or dread. These things can shake our confidence and keep us from being at peace within. As God rebuked the wind and the sea in today's gospel, why don't we ask him in today's mass to rebuke whatever keeps us down and send these demons on their way? It is not the will of God that our lives be blighted by fears of one kind or another. He wants to be our bridge over troubled waters or our port in the storm. Jesus, the invitation of Jesus in today's gospel is clear. Have faith in me and do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Or as the hymn goes, Put your hand in the hand of the man who stills the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calms the sea. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life blessed be god forever Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, 
we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment or condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I am the Good Shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.